today I will be I will be discussing 12 gauge shotgun shells and then we'll be showing video footage of their effectiveness so that you can get an idea of what to expect from them in the field. We're going to start off by showing you some boxes of 12 gauge ammo. This first box is uh, 2 and 3 quarters is the shell length. The anticipated velocity is 1200 feet per second at the muzzle. Seven and a half shot, which is the size of the pellets, and one and one eighth ounce total payload. So in other words, if you were to weigh all of the pellets that's in that shotgun shell, put them on a digital scale and weigh them, the total combined weight should be about one and one eighth ounce. They call this a super target load, as if it's somehow not devastating to animals. Uh, don't be deceived. Pay attention, that's a 12 gauge shell. At the end of the day, it's still a 12 gauge. When you have a 12 gauge, anything's possible. Next, we got 12 gauge. Again, two and three quarters is the shell length. This is commonly referred to as a two and three quarter high brass load because the brass is higher. Uh, what I mean by that over here, the brass goes higher up than on the target load. They do that to support uh, a higher gunpowder charge in there. But getting back to the box here, it's number five shot. That's the size of the pellets heading downrange. And rather than one and one eighth ounce, this is one and a quarter ounce of payload going downrange. And then for something a little larger game, I like to use this one for coyotes myself, BB shot. Um, this is a three inch shell. It's not a three inch magnum, but believe me, it's, uh, it has a, a lot of recoil. 1550 is the feet per second on that. And again, one and one eighth ounce total payload heading down range. Now to make sense of all of the different shot sizes, because there are a lot of them, I've got a cheat sheet here. It goes from smallest to largest when you're talking about bird shot. You've got number nine shot and number eight shot. Then it got to getting a little larger, we've got seven and a half shot. A lot of people will use seven and a half if they don't like a lot of recoil. This is pretty good for rabbits and, and quail hunting. A little larger shot, six. So usually when you get into a six and a five, you're getting into a higher brass load. So you've got more gunpowder pushing those out. And then it goes four, three, two, one BB. When you get into your buck shot, uh, you've got four buck, three buck, two buck, one buck. Again, smallest to largest. And then you've got your doubles, your, your zero buck row. Again, smallest to largest, you've got zero buck, double lot buck, and triple lot buck. Next, we'll look at some actual shot sizes next to each other so that you can get a feel for the differences. Starting on the left, this is number seven and a half shot. Uh, over to the right is the number five shot. Over to the right again is BB load. And then lastly, on the far right is the uh, four buck. Now in a perfect world, if you're going to be out coyote hunting or some type of predator hunting, foxes, bobcat, I would recommend BB load and four buck. But what happens if you come across a coyote and the only thing that's in the shotgun at the time you have it loaded with is maybe seven and a half shot, for example. Uh, do you shoot at the coyote or do you let it go? Um, a lot of that will depend on how close the animal is to you and on the choke that you're using. In the upcoming footage, you'll see that seven and a half shot can be rather devastating and will actually outperform a number five shot depending on the choke that you're using. Okay, we're getting ready to shoot the Winchester Super Target 12 gauge, two and three quarter inches. This is one and one eighth ounce shot. It's gonna be a seven and a half shot that we're shooting. Looks like this. We're gonna shoot it through a 12 gauge shotgun, shooting it through a uh, Mossberg 500 with a modified choke. It was shooting at a one gallon water jug that's approximately 25 yards away. Okay, this is the water jug that was hit with a seven and a half shot, 12 gauge shotgun from 25 yards, walking up to it now. A lot of pellet holes went in there even at 25 yards and equally important there's exit holes here I don't know if the camera will really show all the exit holes or not but those pellets went in they got all the way through that water 
and even the ones that didn't come out left really nice impressions on the back side of the uh, water jug. And uh, looks like there's a fair amount of shot still in there. This is the recovered seven and a half shot that I shot into the water jug from 25 yards. A uh, fair amount of pellets are still in that jug. In this next test, we'll be shooting 12 gauge, two and three quarter inch, number five shot. This will be one and a quarter ounce worth of payload heading downrange. This is a high brass load, so a fair amount of uh, gunpowder pushing the uh, those lead pellets. That's lead, not steel. So um, this will be into a one gallon water jug at a distance of 25 yards. Um, shooting it through a Mossberg 500, 28 inch barrel, modified choke. All right, walking up to the water jugs now. They were just hit with uh, number five shot through a modified choke 12 gauge shotgun. The first barrel or the first uh, jug here definitely has some holes in it and it did go out the back as well into the second jug. But it looks like no exit holes on the second jug. So it's safe to say that getting at least 12 inches of penetration. Uh, through water anyway, and then some more penetration on the back side, so maybe 14, 15 inches of penetration, somewhere in there, uh, through water. I know it's not ballistics gelatin, but it's still some indication of the uh, punching power of the number five shot. Okay, this is the number five shot that I recovered from the two water jugs. The three little pellets that are off to the left. Those are actually number seven and a half shot. Thought I'd put those in there so that you could see the uh, size difference between a five and a seven and a half. This will be number seven and a half shot. We're going to shoot it through a uh, Mossberg 500. This time we're going to shoot it with a full choke. We're going to shoot it at a water jug at a distance of 25 yards. Quite a bit of difference in damage versus the uh, the modified choke. As you can see, it just blew a, a huge hole in the uh, entrance here. A lot of smaller holes there as well. On the back side, we did have a few exit holes on the back. Here's the water jug behind it. Some pellets went in there as well. So it looks like some of those pellets made it a good 12 inches or so through the first water jug and into the second water jug where they are uh, in the bottom now. And uh, a lot of the shot though is still in that first water jug, a fair amount of lead there. I'll try to recover that in a moment. Okay, this is the total amount of number seven and a half shot that was recovered from both of the water jugs after hitting it with a, a full choke or using a full choke rather. Uh, most of these pellets were from the first water jug and maybe 10% of them from the second water jug.